Welcome everybody to this series of interviews with the great strongman players around the world. Today we have uh, the amazing opportunity to have one of my big friends, Zachary Bond. Great to be oh. here. Yeah, thanks for asking me to do this. Of course, of course. We met a few years ago and I had the pleasure to to listen at you, to hear what you were doing, what you were busy at, and now you are in Hong Kong. Yes. Tell yes. me. So I think last last time I saw you too, you were, I think, I don't know if it was last time or the time before, you were performing in Bremen when I was there. I think you were there with Ben, right? Yes, yes. That yeah, was I remember that. Three, four years ago, I believe. Maybe I've seen you once since then at the time shop, I think. For sure, when you were, I think, uh, busy developing uh, one of your new machines. We will talk about uh, your new devices, new trombones, <laughs> a little bit later. Um, tell me, now you are located in Hong Kong, right? Yes. You are working there, you are playing the orchestra, and you are staying there with your whole family. Yeah, I'm here with my wife and my two kids, my twins. They're uh, six years old in first grade. How is the situation there with the worldwide situation with the corona? I think it's been stressful around the whole world. It's definitely difficult to be inside all the time. But uh, things, are, things have been pretty good recently. We've had four days of, of not much, uh, no viruses. So it seems like things are on the up. So we're hoping that, that real life can, can come back to normal soon. I mean, when was your last concert, Zach? Uh, January, uh, the school orchestra did a project with Jaap van Zweden. I think that was the last big event we had at the conservatory. That was a really, really great workshop with the music director of the Hong Kong Philharmonic and the uh, Hong Kong Philharmonic, sorry, Hong Kong Philharmonic and the New York Philharmonic, which was uh, a great event. But then around that time, the virus started spreading crazy in, in Beijing and we all closed down. So since the end of January till now, we've been sort of indoors. Okay, okay. Um, and you were playing, you were teaching until when exactly? Well, we're doing online teaching now, so we, we taught the first semester and then we had January a little bit of a winter semester. Okay, okay. Um, and, and then we, we started kind of seeing what's going on and then we've been doing this online learning since then, which is a, a real challenge. Okay, okay. Suck. So, how is your um, routine nowadays since uh, the lockdown and quarantine, everything has started? Well, it has to be pretty flexible uh, because of having two kids and they're having home learning. And uh, the home learning, I'm having to teach them and also my students at the conservatory. And also have some faculty meetings to, to see how we can support the students the best we can during this time. So I have to be really uh, selfless <laughs> during this time and really focus on my family first and my students first before I can focus on myself. So um, my routine is when I can squeeze it in each day so it's a different time. So I'm trying to, to really stay and, and maintain it during this time. Um, I haven't really been able to do too many projects, although like I, I was talking to you earlier a little bit that um, I have a... A, a short uh, video that will come out in a week week or so uh, of an aria that I've recorded during quarantine that I've played a lot in recitals. So I've been trying to, trying to stay motivated as much as possible, but it's difficult. Also, we all live in um, condos here in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So we have to really be careful about when we play and how loud we play. And so my contrabass trombone is at the, uh, is at the academy. Not at, uh, not at home. <laughs> since, since when did you um, had the opportunity to play the contrabass for the last time? January. 
Okay. You are missing a lot, I believe. Yes, I, I will look forward to being able to go back. So I'm really hoping we can start again in June. Okay. How is your daily routine with the trombone nowadays? Are you doing basics? Are you working in new stuff, working new things that maybe in the past you couldn't work because of your busy schedule? Yeah, I've been I've been trying to have a lot of attention to my soft playing because I think it's a real real uh, chance to develop the soft playing more since we can't play loud. So I, I try to play a little bit big during the middle of the day, but the rest of the day I try to work on my soft playing during this time because I don't want to uh, upset my neighbors, but I also want to work on that aspect and I feel like it's a real chance to develop it a little bit more. So that's that's a personal goal. Uh, at the current time. That's also the other question that I wanted to ask you, Zach. How are you dealing with your short-term goals, long-term goals, because now we are completely stuck? Yes, there's definitely a bump in the road. I had a lot of goals set up for the summer, especially with some festivals that I helped create. Um, ones in Singapore, the Singapore International La Brasse Festival. Um, I, I think we're, we're about to announce soon that we're still going to try to have this festival online uh, in a much different capacity. But uh, we're trying to develop, you know, my, my goals are not only for myself, performance, I'm trying to also help support the students in Hong Kong and especially the students in the region. So I think it's really important that uh, that continues to develop. So that's why we're gonna to try to do this this course online. But also I had a lot of travel from my festivals in Texas and I was supposed to do a European tour with the Melbourne Symphony. And uh, my buddy Ricardo Mola Albero has a festival in Spain. So there was a lot of travel that of course is not gonna happen now. Yeah, for everyone. So that's gonna happen. For everybody, no, yeah. Next year, I believe. Yeah. So, so now I'm trying to just focus on my own individual plane, the product that I'm trying to to be able to to give to the audiences when we're able to do it again. And I'm trying to help my students become better teachers for themselves as well. So the good thing about this this whole process is we're always always recording. My students are sending me videos. They're doing, we're doing Zoom lessons that maybe they can record, and then I can give them feedback and they can listen back. That so, is the only way to work with them, or are you in also Right now, right now it's only online. But they, they, they can also send you a few recordings, like uh, yes. story pieces? I, I encourage them to send recordings as much as possible because the sound quality is better than on Zoom, you know? so. So I get the videos and then I give them feedback and they can immediately listen back to the videos to see if they hear what I hear, which I think is really beneficial. Where, you know, as we were both students and we're students forever, but we want our students to record, record themselves practice and be analytical. So I really hope my students can become the best teacher they've ever had and by the time it's done. So I think this this process during this time, they can have a little time to experiment, record themselves more. We don't have the pressure of too many exams, so even though there will be some exams, but, but we don't have as much pressure at the moment. So it's a real chance for them to try to develop their individuality right now. How are you dealing with all kind of exams and uh, how, how do you just judge them with the recordings? Must be difficult. Well, so right now we're not having exams at the at the moment, but we're hoping to have live exams in 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 June or July or something like this. We're you know we're taking it day by day. We we don't have it exactly scheduled yet, but we're hoping that the situation continues to to develop in a positive way. And if it does, then we might be able to do that. Okay. If we continue to have no cases, you know, if not, uh, like for some of the classes I teach, like uh, fundamentals class and an orchestral techniques class, the students are sending videos, uh, videos of their scales, videos of their excerpts, things like this. It's it's not the same as doing it live, of course, but there's a lot of competitions these days where your first round is also a recording. 
Yeah. So it's a really good practice for them to learn how to record, how to record themselves. The process is really important. Even so, they send some recording for getting invited to the auditions nowadays. Yes. So there's still things that, that they can learn during this time. And I think uh, trying to stay motivated. And, and there's a few online competitions popping up here and there. So I'm trying to encourage them to do this as much as feasible. There, there is uh, a part of this uh, online trombone competition in uh, Budapest. I think uh, there's another one in South Korea. I saw yesterday. Yes. Yeah, Jeju. Uh, I've been on the jury there a couple times. It's a good, great, great competition and very competitive repertoire. And now they're, I think they're asking the first two rounds to be sent by recording. In the finals, they're hoping to do live. I in November, I believe. In yeah. Or something like that. Uh, Zach, tell me about your routine that you are missing. Because now you are in no use, for sure. You are a guy like this, traveling all around the world. So now, since two months ago, more or less, you are stuck at your place. Yeah, I'm really missing the traveling and interacting with people from all over the world. Because I, I'm a strong believer that diversity makes us stronger. So interacting with musicians from Europe and from different parts of the world and collaboration, you know, at different universities with their students, is fuel for my motivation and that's why i also left the orchestra i really like interacting with students that are really hungry to to learn and to develop so i i, I miss the travel that was in my routine um right when this pandemic happened i was supposed to be headed to bremen to also work on some more developments with with max and uh that didn't happen So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things that are sort of on hold. You had a lot of plans for this 20... 20 a lot. Yeah, I, I think like I was, we were talking earlier today, I, I've been taking it a little bit light the past year and a half, trying to focus on the school and my students and getting settled in Hong Kong, which is a really, really fantastic place. I really love living here in Hong Kong. It's great for, for my family. It's, it's been it's been you are in Hong Kong set up uh, with your family since two years ago right yes since uh, August 2018 okay. and I was teaching in Singapore for three years before that and I was in Malaysia before that so it's what about uh, your playing um, you said that you are working on your how to develop a little bit of piano soft playing But can you do that at home? It's, it's a challenge with, with two six-year-olds. But, um, you know, we can give them something, something to do during that time, to, at least for, you know, 20, 30 minutes to have a concentrated session. But during this time, they come first. But I, where there's a will, there's a way. You know, find, find time, squeeze time be more more uh, efficient with with our time mm. okay okay um, we were talking about your developing the trombones do you hear me I lost you in the connection here a little bit okay I was uh, asking you Yes, I think I lost you on Instagram. Hello? I hear you. Oh, you're back. Now it's working again. Hello? Hello? Now it's good. Now it's good. Okay, perfect. Uh, give me a second. Yes, 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 we are, we are. Okay. Okay, Zach, we were talking about uh, 
development or the trombones. Tell me something that you are working still with the Tan Factory. What are your plans? What did you do in the past with, with them? to develop the, the instruments more. So I went to Bremen. He, he said, you know, come, come to Bremen and, and let's work on something together. And at that time they had already made sort of an idea of a universal bass trombone. They had this idea that they wanted to make something that was not as European or German as they had made before. And they already had a fantastic instrument that they made with Ben and, uh, and uh, made together that's, that's very successful and a great instrument. They wanted something else, something that would appeal to the way of playing of more American style players, the way of moving, moving the air. And, and because they had a lot of comments about uh, some people like this, this style of, you know, clothes, somebody likes a different style of clothes, just a different or a different kind of car, you know, they, yeah, they wanted yeah. it to, to be slightly different. So, um, I was more, uh, let's see, less open-minded at that time. I played a Bach with, a Edwards valves and was very American style. I wanted to, so when I went to Bremen and was talking to Max, I was like, okay, let's do this. I want gold brass bell, yellow brass bell. I want, you know, Thayer valves. I want this and this. And, and we start to experiment. And we made an, an, an instrument that was very good. It ended up having Hagman valves, but it was very American looking, yellow brass bell, very American style slide. And so I played this for a while. And then I started making trips to Bremen every few months, maybe three, every three to four months. And the moment you I were started, there, where you were living? I was in, uh, well, at the beginning, I was in the Jacksonville Symphony in Florida. And I was, had a full-time job in that orchestra for five years. So I was there. And then, then I won the Malaysian Philharmonic position and left. So uh, now we've been working together for 10 years. So it started in Florida. And... Um, I noticed every time I started going to the Tyne factory that my instrument started getting more and more European in some ways, <laughs> you know, so it, you know, I started uh, playing with a bell with the crons on it. I started playing a German bell and a cut bell. And I started having lots of other at little details that become a little bit more uh, European. Yeah. Uh, and so now the instrument is developed to where it's very customizable to the player. So it can be more European or more, more American, depending on what the person is really looking for. So I think we wanted flexibility. So that's what we've sort of got with the instrument at the, the time being. So at this time, since I began playing, uh, I think before college, I didn't play with a lead pipe, which there's not that many people that, that do this. So that was just my way for a long time. And so over the years, Max has really wanted me to, to find a way to play with a lead pipe. So also for instrument development. So when most people play with a lead pipe, so we want to design an instrument that plays well for people that play with a lead pipe, makes sense, right? So just this past year or two years, I've been playing with a lead pipe. So we've been doing a lot of lead pipe design, a lot of lead pipe uh, work together. So he's made me maybe a hundred different kinds of lead pipes and uh, found some very good ones, you know, so we've been working a lot with that recently. And For you, uh, the big change to play without lead pipe? 
and now that you play with Ilipe, right? Yeah, I think I was used to working hard. You know, I, I like to practice, I like to work hard, I like the feeling of, of, of working a little bit, and now it's I can just relax more. So it's made me actually a more relaxed player, and I can use maybe, it feels like half as much air. So it's, it's, it's maybe relaxing and, and backing off. I think it's made me more versatile since the switch, you know, but I was, a lot of it was psychological, you know, for a long time. I, I played without, it felt comfortable. I didn't want to change, you know, but now it's, uh, now it's good. So I'm very lucky to have this relationship, you know, with Max, who's uh, very open-minded and uh, we can talk very straight to each other very direct we don't have to and so it's been a it's been a fantastic uh 10-year relationship and with max and heinrich and now with max and olaf uh it's it's fantastic so since you are working with them with time factory um before you were us using a trombone without the code bell right yes yes what was your feeling since you have a bell cut yeah a lot of people ask me that Um, well, to, to be honest, I, like I said at the beginning, I, I was pretty close-minded. So at the beginning, I didn't want it. I, just in my mind, you know. I think I think also working with Max has made me more open-minded to try things before before I close my mind to it, you know, which is which is really good. Uh, I feel that maybe I have a little bit more resistance and easier to articulate the cut belt. Like it, it's a little bit more compact in a good way uh, for me. And uh, articulation for me was the big thing that I felt was a lot better with the cut belt. And what is for you the big change? Because you're an American bass drummer player working with a European factory, you can say. How it become like a fashion with two different languages? I think that's what I think it's it's what Max wanted I think he wants uh you know I think they've made the old German instruments for a long time and Max has wanted uh a uni a universal instrument that isn't necessarily German or American or French or or whatever he didn't want to be put in that classification of these are German sounding instruments that these can sound the way of the player that's coming to our factory wants to sound So he's flexible to, to do that. And I like that actually, because I told him, I, at the very beginning, I was very straight with him and said, I, I'm going to play the, the, my trombone until I get a time, until we get the time to be better than the one I have. And he was very straight saying, um, I don't want you to play the time until you're satisfied. <laughs> so, That, that was really cool to, to see that sort of honesty that, and, and very quickly we, we came to something that immediately I said, this is better than what I've been playing for the last 10 years. Because I tell him, I want something that responds faster. I want something that, that has really eased to sing because I like doing a lot of solo playing. You know, I want something that's flexibility to sing. And then also when I play Bruckner in the orchestra, I want to be able to play very dense and very very fat you know so i need the flexibility so we've been working on this flexibility a lot uh, over the 10 years since you are working working with them um all the this universal model started right it they had made one before right before i started and they were still not showing it really to people because it wasn't finished. And then we sort of started at that first version and then uh, started over <laughs> after that. But they, they had started the idea before, maybe one, one half a year before, but it wasn't um, for sale. It wasn't uh, being, being marketed. It was in development. It was kind of prototype, just one. Yes, yes. And then it's, it's completely changed since, since then. What is your, the suggestion that you give to all of your students? You were teaching in Singapore, you, were, you are teaching nowadays in the performing arts in Hong Kong, right? 
Yeah, I teach at the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts. And Performing Arts. before that, I was at the National University of Singapore, the conservatory's Yang Sito Conservatory of Music. Uh, both are fantastic schools. Um, the academy that I teach at is really cool because there's ballet, there's opera, there's Chinese instruments, there's a lot of different uh, actors, there's a lot of different dra drama, there's a lot of different uh, artistic things happening in the building. So uh, it's a really cool, cool place to be. All combined. Um, all combined, yeah. I think there's five schools in the building, if I'm not mistaken, five or six. Um, so it's uh, a lot of room for collaboration if you're open-minded and wanting to experiment. Uh, there's a lot of room for that. Um, I think what I want my students, uh, what I hope that they get is to find their own voice and I want them to play music, not notes. So I want them to, you know, coming from the American school, there's a lot of students playing in the practice room all day, just playing notes, playing, playing one or two, two notes over and over again without any musical intent. So I'm trying to have my students always think about what they want to sound like, where is the phrase, finding their own voice on the instrument so it sounds honest and sincere. So, and to be musically convincing always. So but they don't have the pressure like, okay, my teacher is playing a tiny instrument. If I want to become like my teacher, I have to have for sure a tiny instrument. I don't push it. Um, I don't push it. Sometimes, uh, if a student asks, then sure, I, I, I uh, am okay with it. But I'm. I have other students that have bought other other brands of instruments, uh, and I, I'm I'm open minded. Uh, of course, for for me, I love time, but I want my students to find their own voice. Uh, some of my students. Uh, at the academy play time some of them play Bach and Shires and I think that's it yeah so there's at some the moment, diversity at the moment you are playing with a tenor bass and contrabass what else do you have what kind of uh, I have a setup? single valve bass I have uh, a couple bass trombones and uh, contrabass yeah okay so I, I have I have uh, I have those one of my I have a student with a bass trombone and with the tenor trombone and um, I hope the academy someday will have a contra I have my own so at the academy okay, nice for sure the academy will soon buy a contra bass trombone to have an spare contra bass trombone to, to all of your students I hope so yeah how many students do you have at the moment now in Hong Kong uh, well. One cool thing about the school too is we have a very big pre-college. So um, I was teaching four pre-college students this past year at the academy as well. So I had four pre-college and five at the five or six, yeah, at the conservatory. So we have masters and bachelors uh, programs at the school. So I have one master student and four bachelors, and that's that's kind of like where we like the numbers to be. At the academy, we don't want it to be too big because we want to give all of the students a lot of opportunity to play in the orchestra. For sure, Zach, you started before when you started learning the trombone, you were a tenor trombone player and then you focused a little bit more in the bass trombone, right? I didn't play tenor much. Okay. I played some tuba and euphonium and, and uh, bass trombone I played all the way through high school. Okay. And, and I, I left high school early. Um, I graduated high school early, so I, I took some summer school and some online courses at that time and finished high school early and went to Curtis at 16. Okay. So I started my bachelor's degree early. How was that uh, feeling? Because normally when you are a tenor trombone player and then you are really like a professional tenor trombone player and then you can take the bass from one and try to play how we call it here, at least here in Europe, Bexel Posaune or doubling, how do, I don't remember how the Americans call it, like playing tenor yeah. and bass trombone in the orchestra. How is that feeling that perhaps now you have the opportunity to be a bass trombone player, contra bass trombone player, professional level, but you need to play some tenor to teach at least? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't play much tenor to teach uh, but 
you know, I I still can play all of the tenor tenor repertoire. And I try, you know, like some teachers play all the time in lessons. I try to, I, I play some with students that really need it. I try to also let the students, like I said earlier, find their own voice. I don't want them to try to copy me exactly. Because then I feel like we might be losing something special in the future. I try to make them think about what they want to sound like. Uh, I want them to be musically convincing, make sure what they do, what they're doing is what they're uh, actually think they're doing. You know, what's coming out is actually what they think is coming out. Um, obviously for major fundamental problems, we'll work on those together, playing together, you know, but um, again, maybe it comes from the American school. There's some places where they're trying to clone copies, you know, really of this particular player. And, and I'm, I think for music to evolve and be successful for years to come, we need unique, we need special, we need, uh, obviously you have to have good fundamentals and good uh, things, but we need to have uh, not copies of somebody else. So what I do you think to... about, uh, sorry to interrupt you, what do you think uh, nowadays we have to live and we have to deal with all kind of online education, education you can call it. What do you think it needs to improve a little bit? I think for speaking, it's fine. I think if, if there was some better online for music, you know, the technology to really hear details in the sound. You know, obviously I can hear if things are out of tune or out of time or, uh, you know, but dynamics and, and musical nuance and, and uh, can't always see how they're moving their air totally online. So these kind of things, I, I think the fine details, if we could really have a super high quality connection to where we could hear studio quality playing, you know, if, if every student had a great microphone and a great interface and a great internet connection, and we could do live lessons like this, it would be a different, different. But your equipment that you are using at the moment. Zoom, Zoom recorder, and a MacBook for teaching, or sometimes my, my iPad, uh, depends. Because here for online learning, for my kids, they're, they're both doing online classes at the same time, but they don't put twins in the same class. So that means I have to have a, you know, an iPad and a, I have two MacBooks and an iPad at the same time. And then if I have to teach, I have to have four devices. <laughs> the connection <laughs> how's the connection internet connection at your place at the, in hong kong at least? it's it's very good in hong kong in my place i'm lucky for this but uh it's a challenge you know and you you have you know people learning and teaching in in, in three or four different rooms and it's uh it's a big challenge but i think it would be interesting i've been thinking about this for schools to to invest in having really good technology if something like this happens that they can they can Uh, that the faculty can have and maybe students can have something to where we can develop this technology further would be great. Talking about uh, technology and recordings, are some recordings coming up? You get some invitations to say, can you record this to make this video? That is really typical nowadays. Yeah, we, I think this last summer we, we, We made a video for a great bass trombone player who passed away in the Hong Kong Philharmonic, Peter Wyckoff. And um, he, I crossed paths with him many times in the US in orchestral auditions and uh, subbed for him when he was in the Macau Orchestra and and uh, just crossed paths with him many times. And he, he was teaching a lot of the, some of the students before I arrived here. He was a, one of the part-time faculty uh, when the former lecturer of brass was was here. And so there was a lot of connection with the students and then he was in the Hong Kong Philharmonic. And so we, we put together a video that's online called Peter's Song. Ricardo Mola Albero wrote the music and he did the whole video, the editing it together. And there's lots of people, uh, Martin Shippers and, and Nico Shippers and um, uh, people from all over the world, David Rahano, uh, 
some of the Hong Kong uh, Philharmonic members and the uh, Hong Kong Academy students are all playing in this video. So that was a recorded collaboration from all over the world. I think even the Paris trombone class, Hanover, a lot of lot of people played in this uh, collaboration. So that was something that that we did this past summer, which was really really great. Um, Zach, yeah, I was just asked to do something mm -hmm. for for. Uh, Mark Lawrence's uh, retirement. He was one of my teachers. Uh, he was just retired from the Colburn School. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things like that happening right now. So going back into your drone on daily routine, perhaps people will watch later on YouTube and now perhaps there you have some students that are online. When you get up in the morning, what is the first thing that you are doing now? The very first thing I do is I wake up before my kids and take a shower because it has to happen or else the day gets too busy. So I, I wake up, you know, a half an hour before my kids wake up and take a shower and then I make them breakfast. And so that's how the day starts. So then their online learning starts, then my online teaching starts. So it's kind of a, we have it down to a science at the moment because we've been doing it since the end of January. So it's, we now kind of know what to expect, but it's it's, a, it's no less of a challenge now than it was. New way of living. And uh, trombone wise, how do you start your day with, with the trombone? It starts later than I want, to be honest. Because uh, usually I will, I don't, because um, right now with the online lessons, it's very difficult to, to, to play back and forth on Zoom because I find there's a lot of, if, there, if I have a MacBook and the other student has a MacBook and we can set the settings, it works okay, you know, okay enough. But if somebody's using a, a tablet or an iPhone, you can't set the settings the same way. So there's a lot of distortion and stuff. So we, we've had a lot of uh, trying different things uh, to make it work. So I've been listening to my students and giving them feedback mostly on Zoom or listening to their videos and then we're having a Zoom conference to talk about, you know, what's good, what's not going well, what we need to develop a little bit more. Then usually when my teaching's done, I'll start dedicating time for myself. Zach, I wanted to ask you something before I forgot. How is teaching on Asia? It's, it's really different in a good way. Um, coming from um, America, the students are, I find maybe, uh, and this is a generalization, of course, are a little too naturally confident and not, in, and not in always a good way. Sometimes it's good, you know, but confidence is really strong. And so sometimes uh, I find it, uh, they're less receptive. And I feel like the students here are really eager to learn. And I was very, uh, the last school I taught at was extremely diverse. You know, I had a, I had a Chilean student. I had, uh, uh, there's a Ukrainian student there now. There's uh, people from all over, lots of Thai students and, and mainland Chinese students there. So it was very diverse. So I think diversity makes us stronger in, in many ways. Uh, learning from each other, like, you know, you were in, in, in Rotterdam, right? And, and the trombone class is always very diverse in the Netherlands, all of those schools. So I think that's what's, yeah, it's what's diversity makes us stronger. We can learn from different cultures. Uh, the school I'm at now is, is also very, very talented and very strong. It's less diverse, but there's something in the Hong Kong people, like there's some fire inside, inside them in a great way. Like they really, uh, and they're, they're good performers. Sometimes, you know, the, I'm always surprised that the performances are, are, are maybe five, six, seven, ten times better than the, the rehearsals because there's some sort of a, a real natural performance element in the students. And I find that, that, that the Hong Kong people are pretty unified right now. I mean, you've probably seen some news about some of the protests and stuff like that that's happening, but it's, um, I've been pretty impressed with the, with how, with the students and how, um, how talented they are and how eager and willing they are to learn. 
talking about less the, the bears what do you mean with that well um this is this is good a good thing actually in, in a way that i feel the level of the hong kong students uh the natural level of hong kong students is very high the 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 natural secondary school high school level there's a lot of families really investing a lot of money in music education here mm. so there's a lot of students um practicing taking ABRSM exams and it's very well thought of as important in Hong Kong. So okay. in Singapore it was a smaller place and there was less people applying to the school from Singapore. There's obviously some very talented Singaporeans but they were taking a lot of students from other countries to fill up the school because there was, you know, su typical supply and demand. But in Hong Kong we have a lot of supply so we we have a lot of very talented uh musicians here so it's uh so by diversity i mean um all of my students are from hong kong and i think that's cool that we are able to have um have have that that we have the quality of players here right now but in there in our department in woodwinds brass and percussion we have students from Taiwan and mainland China and Thailand and uh, and other places. So there is diversity in the school uh, and in the other departments, you know, ballet and other things. We have people from other countries, but uh, Singapore was more diverse internationally at the university. How is uh, being part, taking part of one uh, the orchestra there? How is that for you? Uh, so I, I play as a guest player a lot with the Hong Kong Philharmonic or as, as often as I can. I think, uh, I think in the last two years, I played maybe like eight or nine times maybe with the orchestra. And there's been a lot of probably months of work that I've had to turn down just because, I, like I said earlier, I really want to focus on, on the conservatory right now to make sure that I know how it functions, I know how it operates, I know what I want to change or improve or implement. Uh, but the orchestra is fantastic here in, in Hong Kong. I mean, especially the brass section is, uh, I mean, it's all fantastic. They won Orchestra of the Year this past year for their ring cycle recording. Um, they have a very intense music director. Uh, you know, he demands a very, he's typical Amsterdammer, you know. <laughs> he uh he's he's very tough and very straight and very direct you know and uh the brass section is also very diverse uh, the trumpet principal trumpet player just won principal of chicago symphony so uh esteban from spain and the rest of the trumpet section is from the uk very fantastic players the trombones are uh two american guys and a canadian and the Canadian used to be principal trombone in Malaysia Phil when I was first there. So tuba players, American the horn section is diverse, Australian and uh, Hong Kongese and Spanish and uh, Bulgarian. Wow. So they have uh, That's really there's a lot. There, mm. There's a lot of diversity. And, and, you know, if you go, the rest of the orchestra is like this, too. So um, the orchestra is very, very good. It's nice to have them here because we have a lot of faculty uh, at our school from the from the orchestra. Zach, just trying to going into the the end of this uh, really nice uh, interview. Do you think people after this quarantine, after this lockdown, however you want to call it, will think will see the music a little bit different after that everything? happened after everything ends i think so and i also think the performers will maybe you know i've been in a lot of orchestra full-time orchestras and i know there are some people that their whole career like ben for instance is loves it he loves every day he's motivated he loves the the pieces he's, he wants to post about it and, and and share about it but then you have the other type who's maybe a little tired and a little like not feeling the same way they felt before. So I'm optimistic that maybe some of these people will during this time 
start to miss it and maybe start to 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 practice and start to feel the love again you know and then i think that a lot of the a lot of the orchestral musicians and soloists and chamber groups will be very motivated to perform for their audiences again so i think there will be a lot more mutual love that will come out of this in the end i'm i'm optimistic at least okay okay i i know i know our, i know a lot of our students at the academy that i've talked to on the phone recently just asking how are you doing you know how's your family is always the first question you know but a lot of them say they miss school and performing with their classmates a lot they they miss the chamber music they miss the the orchestra yeah, sure. time so i think maybe a lot of people will appreciate the things that they didn't appreciate as much before mm. I, i'm hopeful but yeah i agree with you sir thanks a lot for your honesty and for all the things that you share with us in your new life since two years ago in Hong Kong. I think uh, a lot of people didn't hear anything about uh, you since then. <laughs> all social media, you are really active on Instagram, I believe, Facebook sometimes, but uh, yeah. we we're missing you, Zach. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll poke my head out a little more. Rich. Yeah, you more told me in the beginning that you are working in a little project recording yeah, I have, an, I have a new video, should come out in a week. Seven, really seven to ten days, really I think, curious. yeah. So, last question, Zach, to yes. keep on going uh, my day and your night there, go to sleep for sure. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you five things and you have to respond with five other words. Okay. For example, if I tell you trombone, you tell me just one word. Voice. Perfect. Second. Food. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, teaching. Love. Nice. Um, music. Heart. And the last one, family. Everything. Nice, really clever as always, Zach. Nice, <laughs> nice talking with you. Nice, really nice. Really nice talking to you too. I, I hope to see you in person after this is all over. Yeah, for sure. So, we'll see yeah. in person somewhere in Asia, in Europe, in America. <laughs> Thanks a lot to people from Instagram. Thanks Danilo that he's there. A lot of students, Zach, that I see. Oh. So I think all of your students they want to call you boss, the boss. I don't. I don't know where this came from, but uh -huh. yes, for some reason that, I see it uh, everywhere. So <laughs> 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 thanks, people from Instagram. See you next time. Ciao. <laughs>